Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology, and we have Hans Willem Das, and we have been discussing about Saturn and its effects and its conjunctions, its aspects. So, if you have not watched the earlier part of this video, then please go and watch it. And now he is going to exclusively talk on conjunctions of planets. So, over to you. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, we'll make a little video here for every Saturn conjunction from Sun through Venus. So to start with Sun conjunct Saturn. Um, this is one of the tougher conjunctions you're going to get with Saturn because Saturn's an enemy to Sun. Sun's also an enemy to Saturn. So it's a pretty big battle that's going on here. But what happens to a person is they basically don't get validated for who they really are. So growing up, there's pressures put on them, um, or they're being punished, or they're being um, graded or judged based on something that's not really them. You know, there's a saying, it's attributed to Einstein, but it's really not by Einstein, that if you try to teach a fish how to climb a tree, you'll be very disappointed. The fish will be really disappointed in himself. And that's what happens with the Saturn Sun conjunction. The person grows in an environment that the priorities of the environment, the priorities of the people, what those people think is important, really don't mirror the talents and abilities of the Saturn Sun conjunct person. So they grow up thinking that they're not really that wonderful of a person, okay? But it's because the way they've been measured, the, um, you know, the, the yardstick they've been you know, measured against has nothing to do with the talents they really have, the abilities they really have. And so they end up being very humbled, okay? Um, if you get a, in a difficult chart, in a very difficult chart with some other severe difficulties, you can also get a person who's severely punished for just trying to be themselves. So the child who, say, does something that is just a natural, spontaneous thing for them to do, who doesn't just get told, no, you shouldn't do that, but who actually might get whipped for doing that, like very brutally abused. So, you know, so there's different degrees of how much pressure is against the child to be who they really are. But the bottom line is the person ends up not really knowing how to be who they really are, not to spontaneously express um, in an inspired fashion the being they are because they just don't feel capable. They don't have the self-esteem because they've always been measured against something that they're not. So you get the, the artist who grows up in a, a family of mathematicians. And he's not good at math, so they consider him an idiot, you know? Things like that. Or you get the mathematician who grows up in a family of artists, you know? So you get the, what the person naturally is. Their natural intelligence, their natural gifts aren't supported by their environment. So they start thinking something's wrong with them. And they become humbled. It is very much a combination of a person being humbled in life. Um, they can also have situations where they rise to a certain level of success in something and then they'll have a downfall. But if they really examine themselves, they'll realize, wait a minute, I never wanted that success. That, that success is not even, you know, what I care about. So in, in a way, I'm glad that things came tumbling down. Um, the lesson is for the person to just to learn humility because out of humility, a person is able to really be who they are. And the person has been restricted from since the day they were born um, by parental figures, social figures, from really just being the person they really are. And so they have to find out who they are, what their natural gifts are, and humbly use those natural gifts. It's all about humility. If they, you know, it is really a combination that's designed to beat a person into a state of, of true humility. And if they discover their talents and then they try to become grand with their talents and show off with their talent, it's just a matter of time before they are forced to eat humble pie or something comes along that humiliates them or humbles them. So they have to have a humble attitude. And as they develop a humble attitude and as they, um, you know, as they develop a humble attitude and they find their natural gifts that they use with the humble attitude, then they can move into period, you know, positions of success and happiness and feel good about themselves. But that takes a lot of time because usually they're trying to do things that they think will make them feel important or think will make themselves feel good or useful, 
but they're not really the things that they really are. And so they really have to find out what their real inspiration is. You know, because we're meant to follow our inspirations. Krishna tells us to find our swa dharma, find our own nature. And a Saturn con Sun conjunction really struggles to find what is it in their own selves that wants to express? What is their own nature? Um, and so one of the things that will result in that, they'll think this is what I am, this is what's important for me to do. And they'll do it for a while, but then realize it's not and then change their path in life. So a Saturn Sun conjunction will also can have an inconsistent path in life because the sun is the path of it's the consistent planet it rises every day at this around the same time around the same place it's always big and bright it's not like the other planets that's always doing something different it's the consistent force in our life it's also the, our kingdom it's the world we build in our life it's the kingdom each person builds that we're in charge of everyone has a kingdom that they're in charge in for some people it's a country for another person it's just their house you know but everyone is building a kingdom. The Saturn Sun conjunction person feels very starved with respect to finding that kingdom. They don't know what kingdom they need to build because they just don't know what their natural gifts are enough and they don't have confidence in a lot of their natural gifts. If, some, if someone is validated or judged based on what other people think they should do and none of those things are their natural abilities, then that person is gonna not have confidence even in what they are good at. So it takes these people time to discover what they like doing that they're actually good at, because even the things they like doing, they often don't feel that they often don't have the confidence in doing those things because they weren't really validated as a child because they were validated for things they weren't good at. A very funny thing can happen. One person with the Jupiter sun conjunction, for instance, whatever it is that they naturally want to do, that they're, they're, that's what everyone around them wants them to do and says, oh, that's wonderful, that's great, keep doing it. So they feel like they get confident. The Saturn Sun conjunction, you know, the things that people try to teach them to do are the things that just by chance are the things they have no acumen for. And so they don't do well in it and they start doubting their abilities to um, really perform. And they develop a low self esteem. And like I said, in severe charts, they get the they, they really get humbled through very humiliating actions, such as abuse, okay? But that's not the common thing. Usually it's more, they're being measured for things they're not good at instead of being measured for things they are good at. And, um, and so they, you know, have to learn to become a humble person and develop their talents. But if they try to become grand boys and try to show off, instantly something will happen to humble them again. So it's a very much a combination of a person learning to be humble, to accept whatever small kingdom is naturally theirs that, um, that they actually fit in. Because there will be a tendency to want to compensate, to try to do a, something bigger or better than they're really designed to do. So you'll see these people sometimes um, try to become bigger than they are and not being able to achieve that, not want to achieve a healthy place. Because we all have our yogas. We're going to have a certain level of success and power in our lives and our kingdom is going to be only so big saturn sun conjunction person lots of times will want their kingdom to be bigger than it is um, and you'll especially see that if you find this happening in leo okay um, you'll you know bigger chance of that happening um, and of course if the person tries to make a kingdom bigger than is really theirs they start pushing and they can become a little ego you know mega mega egomaniacs who are you know bossing other people around too much you don't rarely see that usually you just see the person not happy with what they actually can do feeling that they need to prove themselves all the time they need to prove that they're a bigger person than they really are sometimes so you might notice in their attitudes and actions and words they like to talk a lot about the bigger things they've done, their bigger successes. But if you see how successful they really were, it's always less than they claim because they're trying to make up for the shoes deficit of feeling a lack in their own natural abilities. So once they find their natural abilities and humbly live those natural abilities, then they'll have peace and happiness. It just takes time for them to do that. That's about Sun Saturn, very simply speaking. And uh, one thing generally they say is that if Sun Saturn are conjunct, then you're sure short to have some problem with authority figures or anything or politicians. So that that yeah, and that's happening more because of Sun starving Saturn itself. 
Um, because see, the Saturn starts any planet he's with. The Sun starts the planet he's an enemy to with his Saturn. So the Saturn's getting starved as well. So this is a difficult combination. And usually whatever house you see a Sun-Saturn conjunction is, you're gonna have a lot of problems in that house because you've got two planets starving each other. It's certain combinations with Saturn get more difficult. The Sun is one of them. Um, and yes, anytime you get Sun conjunct Saturn or aspecting Saturn and therefore starving Saturn, or even Saturn and Leo, the sun sign where Saturn gets starved, then you get a person who can um, have problems with authority figures and their egos can get in the way all the time of dealing with other people. Um, it can cause a lot of problems, especially the opposition where Saturn and sun are aspecting each other across the, you know, through opposite seventh aspect, okay? But that's more the sun starving Saturn than sun, Saturn starving sun, which is what we're focused on today more. Yes, so now maybe Saturn and moon we can discuss. Okay. Um, Saturn moon is, a, again, is a really tough one too. Um, Saturn moon persons have been starved when it comes to just getting the care and nurturing a person needs. So usually these people have very unhappy stories to tell about their childhood. 